Welcome back to the Victorian Bar Room here in Kentucky. We are getting ready to celebrate the Kentucky Derby. It is the biggest thing that happens around here, and it's not just us that celebrates it. People celebrate it all over the country, even all over the world. Queen Elizabeth II of England has come right here to Kentucky to celebrate the Kentucky Derby. So it's worth doing right, and there is nothing better on Derby Day than a mint julep. So. The Derby is a thoroughly Victorian thing. It was started in 1875, and so we wanted to find out how mint juleps were made then and to share it with you so you could enjoy the day and so you can impress your guests if you are uh, having anybody over. So this one is sure to impress. This recipe is from 1874, just the year before, uh, the, before the Derby started, and so it's right there in time. And the interesting thing about this is all through the 1870s, generally the recipes you find in bartender's manuals uh, for, uh, for mint juleps are either inspired by or outright copied from Jerry Thomas's book of 1862. Now, I like this one in particular. This is not a direct transcription. This is a version of what Thomas did. We're going to get into his in another episode, believe me. But I like this one because the primary spirit, the base spirit for the drink, is whiskey. And here in Kentucky, we like bourbon. And so uh, we're going to use bourbon today, perfectly appropriate for this drink. A lot of times uh, in that part of the 19th century, they preferred cognac uh, as their base spirit for a mint julep. The way we think of it today, while it wasn't unknown, really evolved uh, to be the standard in the 20th century. So this is going to be a little bit different than what you can expect today, but the base spirit is whiskey and bourbon was very popular in the 1870s. So what we're gonna need today, we're gonna need some sugar, we're gonna need our bourbon, some mint leaves, hopefully you can grow some in your yard, it's really easy, if not pick some up from the grocery store, a little water, and we're gonna get some fruit in here in just a second. We're actually gonna mix this up in a Victorian goblet today. This is perfectly acceptable for the period. Now if you've got a julep cup, either silver plated or if you're lucky enough to have a real sil silver julep cup, that gets you in the mood, by all means use it. They used silver cups back then too, but they also used a goblet, and this is a nice size. I like to have a lot of space for these. And so we are going to start with a tablespoon of just plain white granulated sugar. Two and a half tablespoons of room temperature water. You don't really want to use cold water because it'll make it difficult for the sugar to dissolve. There we go. Take a second to mix that up. I hope I don't sound like a broken record at this point, but people ask me, it's like, can't I just use simple syrup? It's like, yes, of course, the police are not gonna come get you, uh, but you're gonna be missing something, okay? I uh, highly recommend just go ahead and taking a minute to dissolve that sugar. Now the next part is kind of interesting. You're gonna take three or four sprigs of your mint. You're gonna put them with the leaf side down, stalk up into that sugar water, and you're gonna muddle it a little bit. And you're gonna to try to get that sugar water to take a little bit of that mint flavor. So take your time. Maybe when you see a little bit of green, you know you've kind of got it. So we're gonna wait just a couple of minutes. The next thing you do, now this is gonna make sense in a second, all right? It, it calls for three ounces of bourbon. Okay, that's a lot. The bourbon we're gonna use today is uh, Old Bardstown. This is the white label, 100 proof. I think this is one of the best values out there. I don't know why I don't hear more, uh, more about it. It's outstanding. It's especially good in juleps. It comes from the Willett Distillery, okay? So they're based right here in Kentucky, uh, and Willett's an outstanding product, and I guess this is, you know, the tier below it, but this stuff is really outstanding, and it's affordable. It was on sale today for 20 bucks when I picked it up. I highly recommend it. So again, three ounces. If you're at home, in your kitchen, you don't have ounce measures, then that's just six tablespoons. And 
And there you go, friends. We don't hold back at derby time. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is take some crushed ice. We're going to put that on top. Now here's the part I deviate from the recipe a little bit. And Jerry Thomas had stated this the same way. They have you drawing the mint leaves out of this, turning them around and planting them as a nice bouquet. And th maybe this is operator error. Maybe I'm gonna come back next derby day and tell you how you can do that. But this does not look like a bouquet to me. Uh, so mint grows pretty, pretty easily around here. We've got plenty. I'm just gonna get three more sprigs. We're gonna agitate those in our hands a little bit, start to release that nice mint aroma. And there's more of, actually, let's cut those down. All right, much more bouquet-like. Now, these have more garnish than uh, a lot of modern juleps do. This calls for some berries. You can use any kind of berries you like. We uh, like blackberries around here. Put a few of those in. A few small slices of orange. So I sliced up an orange, just kind of made it into quarters. Put that in there. And pineapple. I read that and I was like, I thought, I sure hope they were canning pineapple at this point. And so I looked it up and that actually started in the 1860s. So at this point in 1874, 1875, you are perfectly okay to just get you a can of chunked pineapple. So we're gonna drop that in there, a couple of those. You can see, we've got kind of a alcoholic fruit salad there. Just a little mix again. And dry our spoon off. To top this off, we're gonna sprinkle the top with a little more sugar. And that is a lot of bourbon, but they call for straws, plural. So you can share this with somebody special. I always like to Cut them off near the mint so that that mint aroma is really just kind of making it into your nose and aiding that flavor. And there's nothing like it. Honestly, I've never had a, a modern julep that's quite like that. You know, I, I love all the different variations that, uh, that happened in the Victorian period with cognac being the base and all that, but I am a bourbon guy and having this mint julep from the time of the first Kentucky Derby that's based in bourbon with a really great bourbon, I mean, this is just great right here. I'm, I'm gonna be here for a while. Uh, Amy's right behind the camera, as you know, so she's gonna come around here after we're done and, and help me out with this, but... Mm. I hope you give this a try. I uh, hope you can serve it to some guests, uh, share it with some friends. Please uh, let us know down in the comments what you think about it. If you don't think you like mint juleps, this might change your mind, all right? If you, if you really need, just, just stop by my place, all right, when you're traveling through or something. I'll, I'll change your mind about that. I'll fly out to your place uh, and try it if you, if you help me out with the plane cost. But this is truly wonderful. That fruit flavor just starts to seep down through the whole concoction uh, and complement in just a really nice, subtle way this is a pleasure, and it feels like summer on the porch with the running of the Kentucky Derby. So uh, thank you for being here with us. Uh, here's to you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Click that bell icon so you know we're coming out with new stuff. we got some really exciting things coming out this year. There's a lot of work left to do, but I promise you won't be disappointed, and we will see you next time.